A projectile example. A cannon in a field is aimed 30 degrees above the horizontal. It fires a cannonball at 20 meters per second and hits a sandcastle on the same level field. How far away does the ball land? In this case, the initial velocity 20 meters per second is split between the horizontal and the vertical. Both v naught x and v naught y will both be somewhere between 0 and 20 meters per second. So let's see exactly what they are. We can draw a vector diagram of the initial velocity with its horizontal and vertical components. And this will help us split things up. We can see that v naught x is on the adjacent side, so it'll be the cosine ratio. And v naught y is on the opposite side, so it will be the sine ratio. You can work out your full trig ratios if that helps here. Let's start off with the horizontal. v naught x, from our vector diagram, we can see that we have 20 cos 30, and we can calculate that. Acceleration in the horizontal direction, ax, will be zero. Again, there are no horizontal forces. The displacement, dx, is the horizontal distance between our cannon and the castle we plan to hit. t is the time the cannonball spends in the air, and this is unknown at this point. Moving to the vertical motion of the cannonball, we have v naught y from our vector diagram. Again, we can see that this one would be 20 sine 30, and we can calculate that. The acceleration ay in the vertical direction would be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Again, this is due to gravity, and it's pulling the ball down in the negative direction. The displacement dy, in this case, well, the castle is on the same vertical level as the cannon. They're both in a level field. So, when the ball finishes its trip, it won't be any higher or lower than its starting point. It'll have a vertical displacement of zero. Thus, our dy is zero. And t, the time the cannonball spends in the air, which again is unknown at this point, and this is our overlapping factor. We now have the problem set up and are ready for our kinematics equations. Since we know that the horizontal displacement is dependent on the cannonball's time in the air, let's start with the vertical and determine our time t. Referring to our kinematics equations and our list of knowns and unknowns, we can see that this would be a great equation to use. We have our v naught y, our a y, and our dy displacement y, which leaves t as our only unknown for this equation. Perfect. In fact, we can notice that since dy is zero, our equation gets nicely simplified. Recall that in our type one problems, the projectile starts horizontally, and therefore v naught y is zero, which simplified our equation by removing this term. Well, in this case, we do have a v naught y, so we can't remove that term this time, but because dy, our displacement in the vertical direction, is zero, we can instead remove this term. Again, it simplifies things nicely for our solving. For this reason, some textbooks refer to these problems as type two projectile problems, simply meaning that Type 2 questions have a displacement of zero in the vertical direction. That is, they land on the same level that they were shot. And this makes 
our displacement in the y direction, dy, equal to zero. And dy being zero makes for a much nicer equation when you get to solving for t. So, back to our problem. Rearranging our simplified equation and substituting values, we determine that the ball has been in the air for two seconds. This is the cannonball's air time. As soon as the cannonball touches the ground, or the castle in this case, it's no longer a projectile. Moving to our horizontal direction, we can note that with an acceleration of zero, any of the equations we choose will simplify down to d equals vt. So we can plug in our values and determine that the cannonball lands 34 meters away from where it was shot. In this tutorial, we solved a projectile problem. As is standard with projectile problems, we started by breaking the object's motion into horizontal and vertical, the powerful idea which makes complicated 2D motion much easier to deal with. In this particular problem, we had an initial velocity which was at an angle, in this case 30 degrees above the horizontal. Thus, we had to determine the initial velocities in each of our two dimensions, and we used some trigonometry to do this. We used our vertical analysis to determine the air time of the projectile, and then determined its landing position using horizontal analysis.